Now we will talk about the second application, completeness of containers. So in this case, you can see in my camera, I have a container with six bottles inside. So we're going to check out how we can measure if the bottle is there or not, or if there's any extra bottle on this container. So let's see how we can do that. So we have to open the software again. In this case, I'll go to my applications. And you will notice we already have an application saved, which we did in the last video, dimensioning of rectangular objects. So in this case, I will add another application. So I click on plus and I will check my wizard for my completeness. So you have to click on this one and it is creating an application. Now this application is really easy to find out and which bottle is not present or in which segment the bottle is not present. You will see this is so, so easy to program IFM cameras. So click on the next button and this is some information about uh, how the object should be placed, if it's a glossy surface or not, or there should not be any object between the sensor and object when we are testing the objects. So you can click on next. All right, now it asks for control functionality. Do you want underfill or you want overfill or do you want both? So based on what do you want, you can select. So let's try both of the options. So we want to know if it's underfill and we also want to know if it's overfill. All right, so I click on next. Now it will ask for output configuration. So we have two outputs, output one and two in the camera wiring. So it says select the output logic, it's pulse or static, it's up to you. So I let's make it static and output should be high in case if it's getting true. So now we have a trigger and velocity. Again, similar to our rectangular measurements. If you have seen the videos, I've explained there are different ways to trigger the camera. So in this case, I will use continuous. Okay, this is the option to say if the bottles are moving, if the containers are moving, I will keep it off. And this is to share, this is to show if the container is too high. So I will turn it on because if you see in my camera, my container and the sensor don't have much distance between them. So I will, con I will turn it on to say that my container is sufficiently high and it's a rigid frame. Okay, such as a crate. So this is a rigid frame you can see here. So let's go to next. That's the interesting part. Here we have to define the region of interest. We call it ROI, okay? It asks us to define your position of the bottles. So you have to make sure your container is placed at the correct position, like here, we can see in my camera. And now I have to define the area of interest where the camera should focus to find the bottles. So in this case, I have a grid. So here you have reg uh, regular or honeycomb shorter or longer, right, left, so different way to uh, define your grid. So based on what grid you have in your container, I have a rectangular one with two rows and three columns. So this suits perfect for my measurements. Now there are different shapes for that. You can have a circle shape, you can have an oval shape or square or rectangular, and you can different increase or decrease the shape size like this. So in my case, I would take my circular shape. So I will decrease the size because I would like to focus mostly on the caps. Now, if you notice here, this is not symmetrical because of the camera and the object position. So if you want to make it symmetrical or if you want to have a different area of interest, you can go to manual. In manual, you can define where you want to focus for each grid. So here, I am I want to focus here. In this case, I will go to the center again, like this. Here, I will do like this. This would be like this. It's totally up to you if you want to focus on the, just the cap or the complete bottle. Because this area of interest is the only area which camera is going to measure. It will not care about this area between or the create area. It just focus on these areas. So here I would maybe make a little bit bigger to find out if my container is overfill. Because if I have something here in this area, the camera will not know. I will show you later part in the later of the video, later part of the video. So let me make it a little bit bigger because anyways, the background is the transparency, transparency of the bottle. So there is no much difference. So make it a little bit bigger. This will look good. So once you define that, you have to just click optimize. So it will just optimize the exposure time. So when this is green, go to next. 
and now you have to measure the good state in which you have to put all the bottles inside like you can see in my camera and you have to click teach so camera will try to find out how many pixels are there the area of interest what's the what's the distance between this pixels and the camera it will find out so i click on teach and this is going to find out and do some calculations inside so once you have this tick you have to click on next now it will ask you to do underfill. So in this case, I have to remove one bottle so that the camera knows what's the situation, what's the region of interest signals when it is underfilled. So I'll take one bottle out. So I took the bottle out from this region of interest four. It's a four segment and I will click teach. So he will find out what is the difference in the image when the bottle is there or it's not. So once you have a tick sign, go to next. And now it will ask you for overfill conditions. So I will put the bottle inside. And now I have to put another bottle on the top of this crate. So I have a separate bottle with me. So I will put it like this. And now I will click teach. So it will try to, try to find out the difference when the, when the container is overfilled. So once you have the stick, click on next. Now you have to find out, I will take this bottle away. Now you will see the scaling. So you can see ROI 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 all are green, which means there are bottles present and the condition of our camera is good. Now let me show you what happens when I take one bottle out. So I take this bottle out and you will see region of interest 5 has less signal, which means there is a bottle missing. So you have good state 5, underfill state 1 and which state ROI 5, 5, region of interest 5. This is missing a bottle. Let's try another one. Now I take four out. We have two bottles empty. So this is how camera finds out if the bottle is there or not. So I'll put it back now. Now let's try the overfill situation. In this case, I will put a bottle. And you can see that region of interest three and four is huge. So in this case, camera recognize that it's overfill. I can also put it on the other side. You can see overfill again. So two segments are overfilled, segment RO01 and RO00 and ROI1. So these are overfilled. Others four are fine, you can see here. So if I put another bottle, you can see now we have so many overfills and some problem with the cameras. So this is how you can find out if your camera is sensing, how the camera is sensing the bottles. Now interesting thing is, if you notice this bottle in my camera, this is a small bottle, right? So if I remove one bottle from the container and put the small bottle inside, you will notice, okay, right now it is finding ROI 4. So this is still in the area of measurements. So you can sometimes also recalibrate your camera. For example, if I put it like this, now it will say my auto i4 is empty. So you can rescale the camera measurements, which will define the good state and the bad state. So in this case, if I define good state as here, which is bad because now it is also sensing the smaller bottle, which is not the part of this crate. So I can basically calibrate my camera or position this measurements maybe up to here. Then bottles should be at least this much height. Then only it will be considered as filled. So right now it says underfill. So there is a small bottle inside. So you can also find out if there is a correct bottle or not in this container. All right. So I take this out and put this back inside. <coughs> now similarly, you can also find overfill. So for example, I put this small bottle here or maybe a large bottle. Now here you can see that overfill situation is here. Okay. Now if I put this overfill here, let's say I do it here. Now in this case, it, it's showing three segments overfill. And I now put a small bottle. Now imagine this situation. In this case, if my overfill level is here, for example, then it will not show that the bottle is overfilled because this measurement is suitable for this measurement, for this bottle. The crate will now, the camera will not recognize if the area of measurement is overfilled or underfilled. So in this case, you have to make sure 
what could be an overfill situation. So always calibrate the overfill situation with the bottle size of the original crate. So in this case, if I now put this bigger bottle, I get an overfill. So the best is you have to calibrate the camera and you can do this overfill maybe here. So when you define these two areas, this is the most um, accurate or you can say this is the most reliable measurements for underfill and overfill. All right, so this is what I want to show you. So once you calibrate your camera, you have to click save and this application will be saved inside your camera. And now you can see monitoring. In monitoring mode, you can see here in the results which segment is underfilled or overfilled. So this is what we have defined before. And now let's take, on, take one bottle out. So I take this bottle out so you can see ROI4 is empty. So that's the signal which you will get, or I can also show you in table. This is underfilled. So this is a signal you can also read in your PLC. And based on that signal, you can uh, trigger your robot to position the bottle or uh, raise an alarm. So you can do whatever you want with the signal because this signal you can read in your PLC. And once I put it back, now we can see it's a good signal. And now if I put overfill, now if I put another bottle on the top, Now you can see three segments are overfill. All right. If you go to the statistics, you can see how much complete measurements, good measurements were taken, how many were underfill, how many were overfill, how many were invalid. So because it's a continuous measurement, cameras keep triggering the signal. But this signal you can also take from a sensor, so the camera only, only process when there is a signal. All right. In the viewing option, option, you can also see black and white, you can see colored image, or you can also change how the way you want to see the image. It's totally up to you. This is a different way of viewing the image. So this is about how you can see completeness of a crate of a container in a conveyor line. So I hope you like this video. Thank you for watching. If you like my content, you can subscribe, like and share this video. In the next video, we'll see some more applications.